Hey guys, welcome back. So in this section, now we're going to be talking about autonomous equations and the dynamics of population, so carrying capacity, general environment. Um, and yeah, so that's just like the natural application of this stuff. So starting out, autonomous equations can be written as follows. dy dt is equal to f of y. So you'll notice it's first order. So the first order derivative is going to equal to a function that is strictly only a function of the dependent variable. So you could have something like dx dt is equal to f of x, uh, dp dt is equal to f of p, whatnot. Um, and so that's the only restriction that we have. Uh, in order to kind of like make you understand why it's called autonomous, I've always used this example with my classes. Um, not exactly sure if it's completely correct, but it makes sense in my mind. So if you think about like an autonomous car, and if it was to be modeled by this kind of equation, that kind of makes sense because if we take y to be our uh, position, then dy dt is just velocity. And then so what the equation would be saying is the velocity is equal to a strict function of the position, which makes sense. An autonomous car doesn't depend on both time and position because then that would be disastrous. If a car approach a certain road at a certain time, then it would do a certain thing, uh, would not be a very good model. I don't think that's what Google and I think Tesla are trying to do. So instead what it is, is it's only a function of position. So depending on where the car is and reading any input signals that it gets from that strict position, um, it knows what velocity vector to take from there. So if you have trouble remembering which function needs to be uh, strictly only of, it's always of just the dependent variable. Great, so after that aside, now since the equation is pretty simple to solve, it's even simpler to solve than uh, separable equations because you don't have a, a g of t. In this case, you just have f of y. We're going to do a lot more to characterize the solutions. So the hard part is in solving the equation, the hard part is understanding what the solutions actually entail. So that's a good segue into talking about equilibriums and stabilities. So first thing, an equilibrium of an autonomous equation is given as the y values for where f of y is equal to zero. So really what it means is the points of y where dy dt is equal to zero. So if you have trouble seeing what I mean, equilibriums are just where dy dt is going to equal to zero. Therefore, it's wherever f of y is equal to zero. That should make sense. So that means that the position isn't going to move, or whatever y is in this case, whether it be population, uh, position, money, whatever. It just doesn't move at that point. Because of the derivative, um, there's no change. Going off of that, now we move into stability. Let's say that y0, so keep in mind, y0 is just any number, any point value of, uh, inside the y uh, domain, it, and that is an equilibrium to this equation right here, dy dt is equal to f of y. So in other words, f of y of 0, f of y0 is equal to 0. Now there's three different types of stability for this class. The first one is stable. So if an equilibrium y0 is stable, then the solution y of t stays close to y0 for all of t greater than 0 as long as y0 is close enough to y0. So what this means is that uh, essentially if you have a solution and it's close to y0, the equilibrium, then all solutions are rounded for some uh, reasonable amount of distance between that are going to stay close enough to that point y0. So that kind of makes sense of stable. If it stays there, it's going to be stably staying there. You'll see more as when I draw this out and analyze equilibriums, this should all make a little bit more sense. Uh, equilibrium y0 is asymptotically stable. If y of t stays close to y0 for all of t0, as long as y0 is close enough to y0. So that's the same definition of stable, but we have this other thing. And the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t has to equal y0. So what this means is as the dynamics or the uh, the solutions of this autonomous equation, what has to happen is that if we plug in t uh, of infinity, it should approach y0. Now I know that's not a very mathematical statement to say, um, but for our cases and for this class, 
that's really what it's saying. And you'll see in the face portrait, which I'll get to later, as you go outwards into t equals t is approaching infinity, you'll see that it's going to approach y0. Finally, equilibrium y0 is unstable if y0, for y of 0 if y of t leaves the vicinity of y0. So what that means is if y0, um, if the solution y of t is going away from y0 as t is greater than 0, then it's unstable. It's not going to come back to or stay close to uh, y of 0. So it's a lot of words. Um, let's just do an example, and a lot of this should make a lot of sense. So, this is the population dynamics, classic question that uh, tech professors love to ask. So, we'll take a quick look at this. So, I'm giving you the Tonham's equation, dy dt is equal to r times 1 minus y over k times y. And then I give you r is equal to 0 0.2 and k is equal to 6. So, first part is find all the equilibria. The next part is sketch the phase portrait. And then finally, determine the stability of each equilibria. Okay, so first things first, I think we should probably plug in our numbers. And I'll tell you what these numbers mean, so that you're not just doing math for math six. So 0 0.2 times 1 minus y over 6 times y. Now, this r is known to be as the growth rate. And so hopefully you've had some exposure to the logistic equation before. It's essentially an equation that models a uh, population. And then, if you remember, k is known as the carrying capacity. So that's to say that if you start at a population of like three animals, they're going to want to build up to six. If you start a population of like ten animals, they're going to try to die down or kill each other to six. So that's what's known as the carrying capacity. Great. Okay. So, if you look at this equation, if I were to multiply all this out, it is a second degree polynomial, right? And so, fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that I'm guaranteed two complex conjugate roots of this equation. And so, because they're real, I just get two real roots. And hopefully, you can see that. Hopefully, you can see that the equilibrium. The equilibrium occurs when y is equal to 6 and when y is equal to 0. So if y is equal to 6, this term is going to go to 0, right? And then when y equals 0, this term goes to 0, therefore the right hand side is 0. Since the second degree, we know these are only two equilibrium, so we have found our equilibrium. Great. Now, this phase portrait, I didn't give you any pointers on how to do, because I, f I, in my personal experience, I think this is something that you just learn by seeing someone do once or twice, and then you can recreate it. Um, in my two years of teaching, I haven't had someone not be able to grasp phase portraits that way, so hopefully it still carries now. So, this is how you do it. A phase portrait for, and this is a one-dimensional phase portrait, I like to draw it like an arrow or really, I shouldn't put an arrow here because of uh, what I'm about to do. So let's erase this, and let me just draw a straight line. First thing you want to do is plot your equilibrium. So I have one here at point 0, and then one here at point 6. So at point 6, I mean at the point y equals 6. And then what you do is, based on your differential equation, which was, I'll put it down here, just to remind you, dy dt is equal to 0 0.2 times 1 minus y over 6 times y. And I can clean that up a little bit. That's not exactly what I want. So, what you do is you test intervals in between these values. So you test somewhere between negative infinity and zero, zero and six, and six and infinity, and check for what the sign is of dy dt, and then put your arrows accordingly. So, let's start with 
something that is greater than 6. So let's say if we wanted to try 7. If we plugged in 7 into our dy dt equals 0 0.2 times 1 minus y over 6 times y, we'll get the following. We'll get 0 0.2. Wow, my pen is not behaving today. Okay. 0 0.2 times 1 minus 7 over 6 times 7. Now, Notice that this first term is positive, this second term is negative, and then this last term is positive. So positive times negative times positive is going to give me negative, therefore I draw a down arrow. Okay? Great. Now, let's do the same thing between 0 and 6, and now because I, I just showed you I don't care about values, I care about signs, I'm going to choose 1, and then I'm going to see point 0.2 is, so if I choose y equals 1, then I'm going to get 0 0.2, that's a positive number, times 1 minus 1 sixth, that's a positive number, times 1, that's a positive number. So positive times positive times positive is positive, so I draw an up arrow. And then below, let's try y equals negative 1. So negative 1, so 0 0.2 is always positive, and then 1 minus negative 1 sixth, that's going to be positive but times minus 1 is going to give me a negative, so positive, positive, negative is a negative. So there we go. That's our face portrait. And this is perfectly fine. You can box this in. This is your final answer. And then if you want to... Whoa, that's crazy. So then if you want to draw the phase diagram, if you were to extend these out, so draw dotted lines on the equilibrium, and then imagine that there's a t-axis here as the horizontal axis. You'll see that based on this, these arrows, that from zero it should go up and then approach six. From up, up above it should blow down to six. And then from below it should blow away from zero. Now, the reason that I got these looking curves is because this is logistic, right? You remember, hopefully from either high school or your uh, first semesters of tech, that the logistic equation looks kind of something like this, right? And so that makes sense to draw here. So you can see from here um, what exactly your solutions would look like depending on uh, what y is equal to. So if they ask you for the phase diagram, I believe this is what you draw. Phase portrait is just the line with the arrows on it. So then finally, they want to ask you about stability. So let's just look at this intuitively um, with all the mathematical jargon aside and determine what the stability is. So we can only determine stability for equilibrium, at least in this class. So if we look at 6, we see that from up above, right, so this curve over here, the solutions tend towards 6 as t approaches infinity. So that, that's giving me the inclination that this is probably asymptotically stable, at least from above. And then from below, we notice that as well that this curve, as t approaches infinity, also approaches 6. So because it's approaching 6 from up above and below, and uh, because that's the limit as t approaches infinity, and because any solution that starts near 6 is going to stay near 6, we say that 6 is asymptotically stable. So asymptotically stable always kind of looks like this, this general uh, figure on the on the phase line, phase portrait. The both solutions from on top and the bottom approach the equilibrium. The, the arrows point towards the equilibrium from both sides if the uh, equilibrium is asymptotically stable. Now on the other hand, let's look at zero. So zero, we have solutions that go away from it from the top. So that's automatically not stable or asymptotically stable. So we can already say it's stable, but let's also look from the bottom. From the bottom, it's also going away from it. So any solution that starts even near zero, as t approaches infinity, or for any t uh, greater than zero, the solutions are going to go away from zero. Therefore, they're going to leave the, vis the vicinity of zero. Therefore, we can say that zero is unstable. Great. So be sure to keep those definitions in mind. Um, and I know they're, they can be a little rigorous, especially for 
people that are early on in their mathematical careers. But if you just kind of think about it in pictures and intuitively what they're saying, then they shouldn't be too bad. And so this kind of question is very typical of what uh, tech professors ask in DiffEQ of, you know, find the equilibrium, essentially find where the right-hand side is equal to zero, then sketch the face portrait. So put your equilibriums on the, on the line and then write the arrows to indicate uh, the dynamics of the solutions in between the equilibrium. And then finally determine the stability of said equilibrium, which is right here in case um, you want to write it down. And yeah, that, that sums up autonomous equations. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about stability once we get into uh, systems of differential equations. And uh, stability is also a very rich topic in nonlinear dynamics, which is probably uh, some of the last things we're going to do in this video series. So stay tuned for that and be sure to master this material. It's pretty, pretty important. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.